Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on all things well-being. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am here to have a wonderful discussion with you, which is super based on this theme of Minecraft, which was become the boss of your brain. Become the boss of your brain, because thoughts come first and feelings come second, and then actions or behavior third. We know this to be true. Therefore, the thoughts we allow in dictate how we feel, which then dictate how we behave. And that is, it's just, it is that simple. Remember, simple versus easy. That simple, yes, that easy, no. So what inspired me to, or partially inspired me to, to, to do this one is uh, just a chat with our daughter last night, who was one of our, our middle daughter. And it wasn't anything deep or, or, or anything. It was just sort of, she was just sort of like in this place of feeling a certain emotion. And we we're talking about, and she knows this. And it's so, also very telling because she knows this and still we can get, we can, we can still let it happen. It just could it cut sometimes the world stuff going on and we just kind of fall into the trap of the feedback loop. And here's the thing. We can't feel an angry feeling or a jealous feeling or a sad feeling unless we have an angry thought, you know, a, a jealous thought up here first. It has to happen here. And then she talked to me about, you know, but isn't it important to validate your feelings? Absolutely. We have to feel is to heal. We're not saying don't feel them or try to repress them. That's just terrible. That just leads to all places not good. We want to feel. Definitely want to feel. And we're talking about Minecraft based on positive psychology. It's not happyology. We've got to feel our feelings. And we not, also have to validate, figure out where they're coming from, then make a conscious choice to shift out of it. After we've felt them, validate them, then, then move on. Because what we think about actually expands and becomes reality. Even something as huge as a war, or also a positive sense, huge as the walk on Washington, okay, started, thinking Martin Luther King and all that, it, all of that started with a thought, and then it expands, and like attracts like, and so if that's positive, love thoughts, it, you know, attract more love thoughts, stress thoughts attract more stress thoughts. I think we all know how that works. They actually get bigger, and so the only way to stop that is to do like the Nike commercial and only the reverse. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. I know that um, is 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 easy to say, and it is that simple though. It just takes practice, like anything else. Playing the file violin, learning Italian, you know, robbing banks. Anything we we practice at and repeat, we inevitably get good at. And this is also because the brain loves patterns. The brain loves patterns. So it can get locked into a negative pattern or it can get locked into a positive one, anywhere in between. So stressful thoughts will expand and expand and expand. And just remember that the only meaning anything has is what we give to it, right? So when I we talk about stress in Minecraft, I often use the example of um, a car a car tire going, right? And it pop. And typically when we're driving, we're on our way to somewhere, right? We're on our way to work, school, a date, to pick somebody up, to see a friend, the library, home after a long day, um, a job interview, whatever. And it's not usually a good time for a tire to go, right? So pop, there it goes. We're on the side of the road. We're safe. This is just an enormous inconvenience. And all the stressful thinking begins. Oh, no, I'm going to be late for my date. It's the very first one. Oh, no, I'm going to be late for my date. It's the very second one. Impression is still happening there. Oh, no, I'm late for work again. This happened last week. They're not going to believe me. This really is, you know, my tire really did go. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, the money. Oh, no, what if this is it for the car? Oh, no, what if a creeper stops and, like, I don't know what to do? How do I get out of it? Oh, no, what if no one stops? You know, what if, what if, what if? And all of a sudden, it were a huge stress ball. Well, that isn't the tire that popped. That's all the thinking around the tire that popped. None of that's even happened yet. No, there's no creeper. There's no bill for the mechanic. You don't even know what's wrong. Maybe it's just a tire and that's it. Not that that can't be a lot of money. I don't mean that. Um, no one's pissed at us yet because they don't know, right? Which also uh, leads us to um, the very definition of stress, which is partially John Cabot's. And I feel like I blended it with somebody. But anyway, is, is wishing that the present moment were something other than it is. Okay, that's part of this because... When we, when we are not in the present moment and, and we're in these other thoughts that we're allowing in our head, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and completely cloud and rob us of life minutes in this moment. And they also become reality. They become the person 
who might be pissed who we don't even know yet. Um, if it's a relationship we're stewing and brewing on, that's get, that also gets bigger. Um, think about it this way. When we've talked about hanging on to stuff, the thought expansion fits here too because, and like Wayne, Wayne Dyer says, I love him too, uh, people don't buy, sorry, people don't die from a snake bite. Truth. We die from the venom that's running through our bodies. Well, all negativity is, is venom. Negativity completely clouds the authentic self. It, it just clouds it. It just, and, and actually I would say clogs it. I think Wayne Dyer says clogs it too. And so we're hanging on to a conversation from a week ago, we're like, well, I could have said and should have said, and she caught me off guard, and you just wait till I, again, I'm going to give her, beep, 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 beep. Meanwhile, she's sitting in her out Christmas shopping or something, or she's out for a wonderful nature walk, or she's on a plane, so who knows? Not thinking about you, not this much. Yet we're like, he's super, I'm going to say this, and she did not going to get the best of me again. And we're and there go our valuable life minute. She doesn't know. She has moved in the cabeza sitting on you on a couch in here with a flat screen dipping into your snacks some oreos lovely fruit basket something completely hanging out in your head and the the clock of valuable life minutes i'm actually thinking of the the thing in, in the wizard of oz and dorothy the little the hourglass life minutes just just the grains of sand just slipping out of your fingertips while you're living in last week Okay, with these thoughts expanding, 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 and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, making this conversation with this person bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Also true if it's something from, you know, some hurt that was legitimately done to you, who knows, from five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever, where it's, it's expanding and expanding and expanding, and there's only so much emotional energy we have to give in one day. So think of it like a tank of gas. If you waste it just driving around aimlessly, you don't have it for when you need it. Well, that's true too with the people in our lives. The, you know, we, we only have so much energy in that day. So if we use part of that, or, or think of it like a bank account, you know, let's say it has $100 for easy math, and we spend 40 of the 100 on past, thinking about past events last week, two years ago, that only leaves you with 60. You would have had the whole 100 to go out for a nice dinner if you were in the present moment. Same thing was with the gas. And so, when we don't control our thoughts, they expand and expand and expand. So it's like dumping miracle grow on a plant, which is a good thing if your thoughts are, are positive and you're in a growth mindset, knowing that even if you make a mistake, that it's not a failure, it's called being human, and it's, we'll say, a redirection from, from God, the source, higher power, however you wanna say, this is these things all expand whichever way you go so it is of utmost importance from a well-being perspective to practice thought control every single day which is one big reason if you haven't done it already to start a gratitude journal we talked about it it's i am grateful for three things every day i am grateful for my partner, my family, my golden retriever. I'm grateful for my hot tea. Three things. Remember the I am grateful for part because that is enormously important because if that gratitude is going to expand and attract more gratitude and happiness and joy and inner peace, you've got to repeat, repeat, repeat because it will expand so big. And just like a balloon, right? We talk about filling up a balloon with air. Um, that, that balloon, when filled with gratitude, there is no room for anxiety or depression or anger or jealousy or envy or any of it or guilt or shame. So we want, we want to expand. We just want to expand with loving, kind, grateful, positive thoughts. So I hope this really brought some awareness because something that can seem so simple, and it is, is just so huge. And remember, just like practicing anything else, not only do we get better at it, soccer, whatever, cooking, it also gets easier. It gets easier to, to maintain. So just remember, whatever we're thinking about expands, gets bigger, and actually becomes our reality. So without any exaggeration, we are what we think, and then there's feelings and behavior. We, our thoughts literally dictate our lives. So think about when you're allowing them in, what you are tossing miracle grow on. Great. This is Kimberly Quinn 
signing off from beautiful, very windy northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.